El domingo posterior al día central se realiza el concurso de danzas denominado de trajes de luces, donde una gran cantidad de conjuntos compiten. Los conjuntos de trajes de luces reúnen centenares de personas en escena, ataviadas con indumentaria especialmente diseñada para la danza y que suele renovarse cada año como parte de la veneración hacia la Virgen. Los representantes de ambos gobiernos afirmaron que en el marco de la hermandad intercultural de los pueblos, las danzas, música y vestuarios del pueblo de Puno son acompañadas por las danzas, música y vestuarios del pueblo de Bolivia. Perú y Bolivia se encuentran entrampados en una polémica discusión y es que ambos países se atribuyen como suya la danza de los caporales. En otros países como Perú tratan de apropiarse de nuestra maravillosa expresión cultural y no debemos permitirlo. La intención nuestra no es justamente buscar un malestar, sino más bien eh, agradecer ¿no? El, este arte del caporal. Son nuestras danzas, son nuestras, tienen orígenes históricos en Bolivia. Bueno, se, se debería estar más bien este, feliz porque eh, en otros países lo, se lo está viviendo eso. Lo que es los caporales. En Bolivia han anunciado acudir hasta la UNESCO para que este organismo determine a qué país le corresponde el origen de los caporales. I want to congratulate UNESCO for having recognized the Peruvian dances and traditions of Candelaria Festivity. Oh, well, hold on a minute there because. UNESCO patented the outrageous theft of the Bolivian dances and traditions with the Candelaria festivity. But those dances and traditions belong to the Andes region, which is also part of Peru. Well, 
they might belong to the same region, but they were indeed created by Bolivians. I mean, until when will the Bolivians try to appropriate our indigenous celebrations? Peruvians are always stealing and plagiarizing our Bolivian traditions. This is unbelievable. No, we're not. Did you forget that we were brothers and sisters 200 years ago? Bolivia and Peru were part of the same nation. Enough, enough. Stop it with the brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters don't steal from one another like that. Oh, stop whining about the past, you Bolivians. Just let me tell you that we will always, always protect our Bolivian traditions. You sour losers. Oh, you thieves. Come on. Try, babies. Always so ignorant. I hate you. I fucking despise you. Viva el Perú! Viva Bolivia! Carajo! The Talking Knots is a performance research project that looks into the cultural heritage of Peru and Bolivia. Both countries have managed and defined cultural heritage as a means to reinforce their national identities. In this process, they have been confronted against each other over several disputes on elements of their respective cultures. Throughout these confrontations, inherited narratives and official discourses about, about who we are and who is the other have surfaced. Through our research, we wanted to explore these larger construed narratives and analyze how they play into the lives of people like ourselves. The project aims to understand heritage in dispute by emphasizing people's constructions of meanings and effects concerning heritage. Initially, in the process, only our voices were included, but with the expansion of our research, we tapped into other people's perceptions, experiences, and reflections on their heritage and how they lived it. The main medium of exploration used in this research is performance, dance, and photography. We use performance as a medium to explore the embodied aspect of heritage, tapping on how social and cultural constructions are inscribed in our bodies, ways of moving and thinking, engaging our bodies in movements that carry elements of tension, opposition, and unity. We metaphorically express our country's history. Through our performance, we also explore satire to depict the extreme postures that exist in the polarized narratives of the conflict. Through the ethnographic method, we conducted semi-structured interviews with a diverse group of people from Peruvian and Bolivian nationalities, all from different regions and communities, living either as residents or abroad, from different backgrounds and professions, dancers and non-dancers, therefore allowing us to see whether or not this is an issue not only ingrained in dance practitioners, but in common citizens as well.
With regards to the conflict between Bolivia and Peru, we find three main views of the conflict. The first, a strong position, comes mainly from our Bolivian collaborators that affirm their ownership over specific dances and music, claiming that Peruvians should recognize their Bolivian origin. As Maribel says, I don't mind our dances are danced elsewhere, as long as people say the origin is Bolivian. The other view of the conflict admits the possibility of mistakes in these ownership claims, and it comes from both Bolivians and Peruvians. Josefina, for instance, acknowledged the uncertainty of certain claims. Maybe the Morenada is Bolivian and we are wrong. We cannot be absolute about this. If we say it's ours, it might lead to mistakes. The third view takes a more flexible position concerning ownership that leads to a more inclusive or shared view of heritage. The majority acknowledge the importance of not limiting to geographies and nationalities when referring to heritage elements. They showcase an understanding of heritage that considers the phenomenon of society's displacements and people's movements, as well as the cultural exchange that take place in those processes. Certain aspects that are intertwined in the discourse of heritage are, for instance, the strong link between heritage and ideas of place and territory. Some of our collaborators understand heritage as bound and created by the people living in a concrete place. To others, the idea of heritage is not associated to a nation, but to a geographical and cultural region, positioning heritage as beyond the contemporary borders and limits of our countries. Furthermore, the personal and collective dimensions of heritage rise to the surface, revealing strong feelings and effects towards heritage. For Peruvians, transmission processes are integral to the constructions of heritage, incorporating the memories of loved ones into the practice of dance and music, recalling them with nostalgia and appreciating those forms from learning them through their grandparents and relatives at home and social gatherings. In the Bolivian case, national identity is closely linked to dance and music traditions. Some of them recall the mandatory integration of dances and music and traditions in their school curriculum. Others remember the informal transmission since childhood at home, social celebrations and folkloric events. To speak about heritage is to talk about their dances, music, costumes and traditions, which infuse them with joy and pride. The various anecdotes and stories brought up by our collaborators concerning their heritage evoke an array of emotions as well as diverse memories of place, people, and the past. However, postures are not solely polarized as presented during our performance research. There are indeed positions in between, which lead to new approaches on how we see heritage. We should consider exploring the wide range of feelings and uses of heritage that exist where contents of practice and transmission intersect. The borders dividing Bolivia and Peru are a meeting point and a bridge of communication between both countries' cultures. The continuous movement of people going back and forth between, between countries has been ongoing for centuries, allowing for the exchange of goods, practices, ideas, and customs. Who brought what? Tracing the direction of these complex cultural circulations gets harder when we acknowledge this country's history and processes of colonization. Among the stories collected from citizens from Bolivia and Peru, we have encountered the voices of regular citizens like ourselves. The journey you have just witnessed traveled from us, our questions, perceptions, and feelings to the voices of others whose perceptions and feelings allowed us to address the learned discourses and official versions on conflicts about heritage, most of which have been learned in childhood creating acute wounds and firing up inherited disputes. Heritage is personal and collective at the same time. Through the testimonies, the national intertwines with the familiar and the personal, making heritage discussions and perceptions heated and entangled with personal memories, feelings, and emotions related to place, family, and the past. Among the divergent opinions towards heritage, the grand majority of our collaborators agree on the lack of existing knowledge on the elements in dispute. 
therefore, the need for increasing information and research dissemination on the dance's origins. At the present stage of the research, we perceive this might be one way to diminish tensions and promote understanding. Therefore, we stand firm by our belief that dialogue and knowledge exchange, while employing a variety of creative and artistic processes, such as the one we proposed through this work, could become an alternative to start addressing this sensitive subject. Resonating with some of our collaborators' perspectives, we also acknowledge that claims of originality and authenticity could lead to the denial of histories and sociopolitical processes that have defined our journey from past to present. We should not, in the process of defining heritage, forget about our uncomfortable past and the complicated processes we have undergone thanks to colonization. In light of these considerations, we ponder upon the notion that approaches to heritage and dances should change to embrace and deal with the processes of change, merge, syncretism, and movement involved in the development and construction of cultural heritage. Mm -hmm.